We're going to do the wrist joint mobilization techniques now, and I'm going to demonstrate all the techniques that you can do at the wrist joint to improve motions at the wrist. I'm going to go through each of them. Now, keeping in mind again, as we set our patient up, we want to go through our checklist again. So make sure our patient is comfortable in the correct position here, so his forearm is nice and rested, so he is relaxed. That wrist joint is off the table, so it's not blocked by any kind of movement. I'm in a good comfortable position to be able to put my hands where they need to be and I also always want to make sure I have that good direction of force as well. So we're going to start with an anterior glide and as you go through all these mobilizations you want to make sure that you have in your mind why are you doing that mobilization. So what motion are you helping with? So with my anterior glide I'm going to start with my stabilizing hand which is going to be proximal to the wrist joint there so I can just grasp around the proximal part of the wrist. My mobilizing hand is going to be just distal to it so it's very close. As I'm close at this wrist joint keeping in mind I am not over the wrist joint and that wrist joint is free of any table to block motion. My direction of force for an anterior glide is going to go directly down towards the ground so that I can do an anterior glide of the wrist. As I do this anterior glide, that is good for wrist extension. I can do any of my four grades of mobilization there depending on my patient and what their needs are. Because the wrist joint is small enough that I don't necessarily need to use gravity to assist me, I can keep his wrist in this position rather than flipping it over because it's more comfortable for the patient, but now I'm actually going to pull upwards into a posterior glide. Stabilizing hand is proximal to the joint and my mobilizing hand is going to be distal to the joint. Again, I'm not blocking the joint at all and I'm not over the joint. But now I'm going to do a posterior glide. My direction of force is still straight up and down, but this time I'm going to pull upwards more towards the ceiling so I can do a posterior glide here which is going to be good for wrist flexion. I can do any of the four grades of oscillation for that. I can also do a distraction. Now the distraction is going to be good for all motions at the wrist, but in order for my direction of force to be correct, I will need to drop the elbow. So now my direction of force and forearm are in line with how I'm going to pull for the distraction. With the distraction at the wrist, I want to make sure I kind of unweight the tissue there a little bit, and then I'm just going to pull straight perpendicular to that joint. You can see that I can distract that joint. Remember the distraction is just a hold and then an easy release. So we can do a medial glide at the wrist. So a medial glide at the wrist, if I'm in anatomical position, is going to go this way. So that means it's going to be good for radial deviation. So keeping in mind why, you're use, why you are using this. So my radial glide, the wrist joint actually has a bit of an arc to it. So instead of doing a straight mobilization, I actually need to do an arc of motion. So as I do this, my motion is going to go in this type of an arc to do my medial glide. So I'm going to put my hands in the same similar position where my stabilizing hand is proximal to the joint line, my mobilizing hand is distal to that joint line, but as I do my joint mobilization, instead of a straight down, I'm actually going to move my hand in an arc. So my medial glide is going to look somewhat like this. So I'm still pushing down towards to the ground, but I'm doing an arc motion as I push so I can do a medial glide for radial deviation. So now I'm going to do a lateral glide, which means in anatomical position I'm going to do a glide this direction laterally, which is going to help with ulnar deviation. So keeping in mind, even though my pinky is going medially, my glide is lateral, which means it's going to help ulnar deviation. So with my wrist, I can stabilize proximal to the joint, I can put my mobilizing hand distal to the joint. But now I'm going to pull upwards in that similar arc motion here because this is an arc that we're working with. So now I'm going to pull upwards in an arc while I'm also gliding so that I can help with ulnar deviation. So again, keeping in mind that I'm actually pulling upwards at an arc as well. So this would be my lateral glide for ulnar deviation.